When it comes to environmental triggers, you've got to throw a very big net because it comes into dietary. And obviously, with gluten enteropathy, we're talking about gluten. Okay? Viral infections, all right, especially with regards to thyroid disease, uh, uh, can set off uh, thyroiditis. Uh, viral diseases can set off a pancreatitis. Um, so viral infections can be the precipitating agent of a whole host of diseases in the human body. Heavy metal toxicity, which we generally don't think about or talk about. Heavy metal toxicity, mercury in particular. The major source? Air pollution. Coal. Coal. We're sticking those great big stacks way in the air, dumping it up as high in the atmosphere as we can, and then it rains back down on us. But there's also uh, fish, okay? And uh, the fact is we've destroyed our oceans and uh, we've polluted them to such an extent that the overwhelming majority of stuff we're pulling out of the waters these days is polluted not just with oil, thanks to BP, uh, but there's a substantial amount of mercury. And it's in the bigger game fish. So swordfish and albacore tuna uh, are the two biggest offenders uh, with regards to that. So you need to really be paying attention. It's getting harder and harder to, to find things to eat because we've been destroying our environment. But heavy metal toxicity is far more common uh, than we tend to think about, and it's not looked for most of the time. Um, medications. Uh, there is a whole slew of medications, and there are immune suppressive medications that we use, obviously, for uh, treatment of uh, cancer diseases. Uh, but the medications alter our environment such that if we're taking antacids, how many of you here take something that suppresses stomach acid? Okay. How many of you here take Tums? All right. These things that suppress stomach acid, there's a reason for stomach acid. All right. Without stomach acid, you have trouble breaking down proteins. Without stomach acid, you actually wipe out your first line of defense of, against bacteria and viruses that we ingest. All right. Changes the whole pH of the gut, sets up a potential whole other set of problems. How many people here take Advil? or some other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent, okay? The focus of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents has been on ulcers. But the fact of the matter is, some studies estimate as many as two-thirds of the people taking uh, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents have problems with their gut in terms of the entire intestinal tract. Stress. Stress is another major factor. It will change the pH of your gut. It will change the motility of your gut. Uh, it will change your blood pressure, all right? And stress actually goes along with a whole array of things because stress is really just a code word for various mental disorders or stressors. So depression will have an effect on your immune system. You're not just depressed, your immune system gets depressed. And biotoxins. Biotoxins are, um, there are a percentage of people who have problems with things such as uh, molds, the molds specifically are the ones that grow in the house. Uh, they set up an inflammatory reaction in the body, and uh, they can create all kinds of havoc everywhere from weight gain to problems with ADD, ADHD, depression, uh, problems with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue-like syndromes. So you have to be thinking about all of this stuff whenever you're seeing anybody who's got chronic disease, what else is going on with them, all right? This list is not exhaustive. But this is just giving you an idea of the kind of thought processes that your physician should be going through and you should be going through as to what may be precipitating this.